the agenda from the board. Rosemary? Okay, under school board subcommittees and reports, the community team, Rosemary Reed is deleted. Any other adjustments to agenda? I have one adjustment to agenda, and that would be under new business, and that's to set the September meeting and workshop dates. Anybody from the public? Seeing none. We will move on to approval of the school board minutes of the August 11th, 1992 meeting. Are there any corrections? I have one under item 7C, school board policies. No, wait a minute. Under under 7B, um, Rosemary Reed made a motion seconded by Loretta Pond accepting the following coaching assignments for the 1992-93 school year. It doesn't show a vote. And I believe that was 6-0. Are there any other adjustments? Seeing none, um, the minutes stand. We will now move on to communications. Are there any communications? None from me. Seeing none, <clears throat> we'll now move on to the superintendent's report. Okay. Um, these are items that we, for the most part, had on the board agenda just two weeks ago, so I will move down rather quickly just as update kinds of items. The summer construction projects, the kindergarten wing is, is uh, just about done. We were held up, as I noted, two weeks ago with the carpeting, and that is, uh, it was supposed to be finished this afternoon. Uh, I haven't been down to see, but if not this afternoon, then certainly tomorrow. Uh, furniture is coming in. There is uh, some in many of the classrooms now uh, throughout the buildings that have been affected by moves. Teachers are, are able to get in, have been working in putting things in, so things are really looking very good. Um, one piece I know that we will not have when school starts, and that are the, uh, will be the lockers at the uh, fourth grade wing, that what used to be the kindergarten wing. Uh, we have a delivery date, but it is in September, so uh, sorry, kids. <laughs> but they are coming, and the fourth grade will uh, will have brand new lockers. And uh, other than that, I'm not aware of anything at this point that shouldn't be ready. There are some projects that are not completed, as I said, that we see the possibility of doing. I am glad that we did decide to bring the kids back in after Labor Day, to be honest with you, because uh, it is a little tight now, and uh, we would really be under the gun. But uh, I just want to, again, compliment Sue Weatherby, who has been our, our uh, total quality system specialist in all of this organization, as well as all of our staff. They've been wonderful. And certainly um, add a uh, thank you to the high school kids who worked with us this summer. What, what is the status of the, the playground at the kindergarten? Well, this is a weekend schedule for uh, the build. And uh, I think, if I remember correctly, it's Saturday with a rain date Sunday. Is anybody? Is that correct? Um, obviously, I, I haven't really studied the weather forecast uh, we've all been unfortunately I'm sure glued to the hurricane situation uh, I did hear some comment that with the way the weather pattern is developing we may get a good deal of rain on the weekend so what that will do I don't know but we have certainly seen the uh, preparation of the ground uh, I know that there's been a very um, hard-working parent group again thank them for all their work so if it doesn't go in this weekend, it will as soon as possible. There is a picnic scheduled on September 2nd. I think that's been widely advertised. Um, and the first day of school, September 8th, is an orientation day for kindergarten where um, there's invitations been sent out to parents and staff. Uh, we'll be showing the children around, and they start on Wednesday. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, moving on. 
The administrative uh, council uh, did meet for two days last week um, and not only reviewed last year's goals and our implementation plans for this year and um, discussed the goal setting process again uh, tied to the mission statement, uh, covered a lot of different nuts and bolts types of items. Um, but I would want to note that we also had a workshop in the afternoon with the uh, board attorneys <coughs> on um, processes for teacher evaluation. I think it's important to note that because in the discussions we've had so far, I have not really focused on the fact that we are really starting up our new teacher evaluation plan this year. Uh, I will be updating the board on that. Um, and you may recall that part of that plan called for staff development for administrators. Uh, it is our intent to pick up the uh, some of the uh, hard work that the career ladder groups uh, did as far as spelling out standards for teaching, uh, standards for classroom instructional practices. They have been incorporated in the revised document that will now for the first time be applicable to all staff. <coughs> um, the features of that document are available to anybody that's interested in them. I think we've talked about them before, so I don't feel I need to summarize them now. But I just do want to note that we have had a administrative workshop preparing us for certain aspects of that move and we will continue to have um, other types of workshops covering that issue. Okay. In your packet I uh, gave you copies of the 11th grade MEA scores and uh, I know at our last meeting we were talking about fourth grade scores. It may seem um, that one is on the heels of the other but that is the way they come in even though the fourth graders uh, take their tests considerably before the 11th grade as a matter of fact but because of the uh, the uh, grading processes for some reason or other we get the 11th grade it seems to me uh, more quickly I certainly want to compliment uh, the students and the staff uh, I think parents deserve um, a compliment also um, these are all 400s in other words the 11th grade scores uh, are as good as they can get um, so congratulations and be willing to answer any questions that I can about that. Mark. I just want to second the congratulations. It speaks to a lot of strong effort by teachers um, all throughout K through 12 and the current high school system that's producing academically achieving students. The we have we have spoken in the past about our interest and goals as a, as a school and what we have found is that uh, we, we first wanted to address it from a Maine standpoint and be competitive in Maine then go on to a national and then a worldwide standpoint and we're clearly on that path and going in the right direction and continuing to, to try to improve our curriculum and maintain high standards I also think it reflects the high percentage of students that are in college preparatory courses here and those that do go on to school. And I, I again compliment our staff and the students for their good work. Okay. Yes. Good work. <laughs> it's, a very, it's the first time as a superintendent I have ever had that um, opportunity to look at scores coming back and see a total for 100. So. Um, feels very nice. I know that that's not the best of all possible worlds. I too know that there are other issues besides that, but I think it's good to say job well done. Going on, uh, the last two weeks ago I also explained in more detail where we were in our total quality management efforts as well as the next item, the diversity committee, and I'll get to that in a minute. Again, we've had, we continue to have meetings on total quality and I continue to look for ways in which we can reach out, uh, and I do want to emphasize, without getting on some kind of bandwagon on this. It is difficult to understand how to translate the tools known as total quality management into the educational framework, but we are already finding that some of the tools we've been exposed to are very helpful. Um, I, really think it may also be very useful to understand that we're really talking about system design. How do we redesign the ways in which we typically do things 
so that we can do them more efficiently and effectively. Uh, I will be writing up something about the efforts we've done with the custodial maintenance uh, strand because I believe that is so concrete that it offers us a good case study. Uh, I don't know exactly when I'll get that written up, but I do intend to do it both for my own purposes and to share with not only the board but anybody else who's interested. I think there's some real lessons to be learned here. People who genuinely want to do a good job, but it is part of this whole approach, so we must be very clear what the goals are, what the expectations are, and everybody involved has to be part of, of planning how the system is going to work. Uh, it's very difficult work, and I'll mention a concrete example when we get to the bus routes that I'm going to uh, distribute tonight also. Once again, I appreciate the, uh, uh, the goodwill and the cooperation of uh, not only people in that particular strand, but also the administrators, and now many teachers are getting involved. I think you'll see some interesting things happen. The next item, the diversity committee, we had another meeting on that committee today. This is the one that on your last agenda was called teaching tolerance and it was brought to my attention that that sort of sounded almost like um, maybe giving the wrong message that sort of that one tolerates uh, differences rather than celebrating them. So we have uh, decided as a committee to change our title, but it's the same committee. Um, we're fine, those of us who are meeting with that committee are finding it a rich experience and we are inviting people to join us and in the three meetings we've had, we've had uh, the same core group but we've also had other people coming uh, because they're interested in this whole issue of multiculturalism and how it might reflect in our, to improve our uh, way, the ways in which we react, um, interreact with each other. Uh, obviously, there are curriculum aspects, um, there are policy aspects, there are, uh, we're trying to prioritize some of these things. Um, at this point, we're, we're uh, definitely going to be reaching out to every faculty. Um, I will go to each faculty uh, in turn to explain from a policy level. This is tied to our mission statement where we truly want to work at an atmosphere where there is respect for everybody and then translate that into day-to-day uh, -to -day operations as well as curriculum. Um, I think it's a rich experience and one that uh, as we look back at the end of the year I'm very hopeful that it will um, uh, truly be seen as an effort that will uh, bear a lot of fruit not just in some of the uh, commonly thought of a, those aspects commonly thought of as effective but I firmly believe and this group certainly reinforces that belief that uh, good learning takes place good academic learning takes place in a context of respect we're also drawing in um, a, a collaborative approach in that today we had a middle school student student join us and we will be having two middle school students and two high school students to give their perspective. And I, it was, he was our minority person today. Yes. And he handled <laughs> it very well. And he did have some insightful things to say. It's really important that, that uh, yes, absolutely. It's, it's such a long, uh, these meetings go on for three hours and we're still talking as we leave, so it's very hard to summarize, but we will get to a point um, where we can, um, give you the gist of it very quickly and so that you will know. Okay, moving on. I included in your packet the yearly uh, athletic report from uh, uh, Keith Weatherby. Uh, I don't see as necessary going down through this. I would just note a couple of highlights for you. Um, I don't see, uh, since there was nothing particularly controversial here, I uh, mentioned to Keith that it was up to him if he wanted to come with anything that he thought he might need to explain, but he thought it would probably be quite clear to you since he had done this last year and wanted to make sure that you saw this as sort of an update. We include some budget information. Um, he does point out that uh, uh, we had some highlights of the year. The selection of Mike Brady as the outstanding high school athlete in the state of Maine. Uh, and Kate points out that this honor is an indication of the high quality student athlete we have at Cape Elizabeth High School. Um, talks about outstanding coaches and uh, also he talked very openly about the fact that we had a substance abuse problem last year that we were certainly all well aware of. 
um, and that he believes that the move that they're now taking with the uh, training rules that we discussed at our last meeting and at our June meeting to include student input will be a healthy one. Again, obviously noting that we will be reporting to you how that goes. High percentage of youngsters involved in athlete, uh, athletics. Um, that's summarized in the next page. And the gives a, a, a win, loss, and tie. We're doing a lot better than the Red Sox. Never mind, I've given up on the Red Sox. <laughs> and um, also, I think you uh, were interested last year, and he's continued the practice in giving you a cost per student for the different sports. And I want to thank uh, Keith Weatherby, the athletic director, for um, a good, clear report. And I also want to thank Rick DeFusco and Keith Weatherby for their um, uh, letter to us uh, at our request to provide us with the five towns and, and what their actions on substance abuse yes. and sports. Um, the, the, sport, the sports season has started with practices over a week ago. Uh, Mr. Miles, do you know if any of those teams have handed in their contracts yet? Will we be receiving copies of those contracts? Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. And finally, um, I put on the agenda to at least report on our workshop meeting on goals. Obviously, um, we just met last night, so we haven't had time to do a lot since then. Uh, but for the general public, this is a process that we are working on to make the goals uh, consistent with our mission statement and con consistent with the uh, issues that are already at work in the, um, in the schools. So my understanding from last night is that members of the board will be prioritizing the summary list I gave you. Um, again, that each individual principal and staff will be discussing some of the uh, issues as they see them and prioritize them in their own buildings. And I will work for our September board meeting to give you a summary of uh, all of those responses with our goal being uh, we have, as I see it, we have in our mission statement some real long-range goals, some very substantive things that we're saying. Um, and I was rereading it again. I think to, to say that we want to, our goal would be to have every student uh, achieve a level of academic um, uh, skill such that they could uh, at least uh, feel comfortable in applying to a major university. It's a very ambitious goal. And I think we should, uh, we should not apologize for the fact that it sounds like a very ambitious goal. It is. I also want to be realistic about what kind of work that would take to get there. And I also want to be very clear that it does not mean that this board or myself or the school system does not value uh, a great deal of differences in ability. Uh, what we're wrestling with as a country is what level of academic skill is going to be necessary for our children in a global economy in the world into which they are going. Uh, we don't have the answers to that, but to set that kind of long-range goal and to work towards it and to understand it better as we work towards it I think is very important. Uh, having said as much, what can we get done this year? <laughs> and moving from, from the long range in the very global picture down to the priorities that this board would like to set based on where you think things are and then to have the, the discussion with administration and staff as to what we think we can actually accomplish will yield us, I hope, by the, um, certainly by the October board meeting with a very clear set of objectives. We may even have it by September, but at least um, it may take us another meeting to do it. 
Um, Beth Henderson provided us with goals that, that they had established as administrators. Um, do you expect to get from the other two schools the same? Yes, I, I certainly think so. And I think that I, I also want to mention that the, uh, those are preliminary goals that are coming in at this point because school has not started. There has not been the staff meeting that would be necessary to share that. But that's what uh, she's doing as a conversation piece or it's a beginning discussion piece with her staff. Um, as I, I'm the one that's seeing all of them, uh, and I would see, I see a fair amount of consistency going through. I think it's prioritizing that will be difficult but necessary. I mean, um, for instance, uh, I'll take a moment to digress. I mentioned at our last board meeting that uh, we had had a systems simulation where people were given a task to build with, um, uh, what do you call those things? Legos, right? Those Legos? Anyway, little plastic blocks. Um, and it's a wonderful simulation. And about halfway through, you realize you don't know what you're doing. I mean, actually, you know that right off. <laughs> and uh, the point of the whole thing is to uh, really um, emphasize to participants that you've got to have a clear vision. You've got to know what your goal is. And once that is established and there's some communication established, then, in fact, you may get somewhere. Um, that may sound like a very obvious statement, but uh, it is not obvious. Priorities are different for different people, and as a system, we have to work hard to make sure that we will have clear priorities and the staff is clearly aware of them, and I think we can make some real progress. Any other comments? Um, I, I guess I'd just like to say that I hope that at the building level the goals will be um, somewhat more concrete than the board goals can be necessarily. I, mean, I, I think you know, our job is really to set the direction, but I would, I would like to see the school goals have, speci have some specific you know, concrete items that will be accomplished with timelines attached to them, not for everything, but some specific things that we will definitely see done by the end of the year. I think this is one of the uh, issues in school reform nationally. There, you know, I lived many years as a school teacher where uh, I put down a goal as uh, appreciation for literature, and every time I put it down, I thought, what does that mean? Uh, certainly didn't mean much to me. It wasn't going to mean much to anybody else. It was sort of uh, wishful thinking. And what has happened nationally, and I think it's a healthy trend, is to force us to think through what is it we want in student terms? What do we want the student to be able to do? Uh, if I want to teach appreciation for literature, what are the benchmarks that I am going to accept as telling me that the student's appreciation for literature has been enhanced? I mean, when he goes out and buys a ticket to a Shakespearean play all by himself without anybody asking him, then I guess maybe we that kind of thing. We have to. I, I think that's what you're asking us to get down to the what will the student do as proof. I buy that. Okay. Will the September workshop then be one with administrators to discuss goals? It's probably an appropriate. Um, I mean, it may all fall to, into place by the September board meeting, uh, leaving us a workshop open for another topic. My hunches that probably won't happen. Okay, thank you. We now move on to school board subcommittees and reports, and the first and only one is the finance subcommittee report. Rosemary Reed, Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I would like to report that the finance committee has met for its second meeting, and at tonight's meeting we did... I'll start again. <laughs> The Finance Committee met tonight for the second uh, meeting uh, of this year, and we received a report from the superintendent and business manager on the kindergarten center costs, which are not running over budget. Uh, also that we reviewed a cost summary of the teachers' salaries and uh, benefits of the new hires, and uh, we hired some very exceptional staff and we reviewed and signed warrants. And after about a, uh, an hour long meeting, we came to this meeting. So I didn't have time to prepare a long report, but that's in essence what we did today. 
Um, the other thing that I would like to report to the public and to the rest of the uh, school board members is that uh, the superintendent, the town manager, the school board chair, uh, Mr. Greer, and the town council chair, Janet McLaughlin, and myself and Irv Chapel, the town council finance chair, met to discuss basically two issues last week. The first being the disposition of money that was returned to the school system as a result of the superintendent's application to receive rebates on state mandates which included the removal of oil tanks and reinforcement of uh, a school roof. As a result of those efforts, uh, we were returned uh, approximately, and I'm sorry, I don't, I just have the net amounts, but it was $62,000, if I may. Uh, $62,000. Two of those uh, projects, which are the removal of the middle school and the high school tanks, uh, will have to be done next year and the year after and of course the work done to the uh, middle school roof we all know has been uh, already completed. We went to the, to the committee meeting asking basically for the town council to recognize the funds and also to respectfully request that the finance committee of the town council uh, allow the the authorization of full payment of the removal of those tanks, which was only partially rebated, and also to request consideration that the, alloc that the balance of that amount, which is $50,000, be allowed uh, to be put into a segregated fund and used as building uh, concerns uh, became identified and funds for capital outlays were needed that were not budgeted for. At the September 14th meeting of the Town Council, they will uh, consider our request and make a decision, and I will be at that meeting to answer any questions that the Town Council may have. The other issue we discussed, which will be coming up on the agenda, is the need for us to uh, proceed with discussions about a new middle school and also how that should be financed and presented to the public and I'm sure you'll be hearing more about that in a report later in the meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions of Rosemary? Any other members of the committee wish to comment? Seeing none, we will now move on to unfinished business, and the first is discussion of the building committee. And just to pick up really um, where Rosemary was, uh, in my agenda notes to you, I indicated uh, a possible uh, composition of that committee. Um, I'm happy to indicate that uh, I, uh, I think we have had some interest shown uh, from people who will be uh, very helpful. Um, I think we need to go through a process and, and indicate exactly how we will deal with that, but I'm, I'm optimistic that we are going to have uh, very good help. Um, I suggested that we have a committee composed of two school board members, two town council members, and five members to be appointed th um, through, I understand there is an application process the town uses for such committees, um, and certainly we can ask for uh, some uh, names and ideas from that. Uh, I, as far as the funding that uh, Rosemary is referring to, when you get into this process very quickly, once a building committee is set up, we will then have to uh, start looking at a timeline. I mentioned earlier the uh, background of this, of course, in case anybody happens to be listening to this, uh, especially if we weren't listening two weeks ago. We have made an application to the state for a middle school uh, project, knowing all along that the state would only be able to fund a small part of it because it is mainly, a, or, or at least substantially, a renovation project, which they don't fund. Um, but we thought it was useful to try to, to maximize that possibility, but we're way down on a long list with very limited state funding, and it would be years before we would have any hope of moving up and might still not move up because there are still schools that are having a higher burden of influx of, of um, kids with kids who are literally just out in 10 or 15 portables ringing a building, and they, that is a high priority that we simply don't have. Our situation with the high school larger than our needs and larger than our projected needs gave us an opportunity to um, solve some of our current space needs by moving people around. 
Uh, and in case anybody has the idea that 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 we cut off our, our nose despite our face there, the state requires you to put in all the square footage you have before they fund anything. And if you don't tell them, or if you don't come up with the idea of using that square footage, um, they will tell us to do it before they will fund anything. So it wasn't a matter that we, uh, uh, we moved and we didn't have to. At any rate, my advice has been to the board that we put together a building committee and that we start moving with the possible timeline of a local referendum for a major middle school project in May. It makes sense to go out for a referendum when there is also a local vote because it does cost money to set up a referendum and that's why school projects typically go, if possible, at a time when there is other voting going on. Um, a major cost at this point is uh, architectural fees for what is known as a concept design. We spent some money last year. A lot of us spent a lot of time in the school space study, so we have a lot of that work already at least started. It's been a great deal of analysis of what the building uh, needs and what the possibilities are for design, uh, but there's still a lot of work that has to go out before there's a what the concept that you can explain to people and be precise uh, how many rooms and what kind of facilities and so on and of course architects uh, like anybody else time is money uh, it is one it was one of our discussions with the meeting that rosemary alluded to um, with the town council that uh, we would uh, be able to use some of that money to uh, to pay for those costs uh, if you don't have that then oftentimes what school systems do is use bond anticipation notes when if you go out to referendum and you're not successful you get stuck with that that little problem um, because that's what the bond anticipation note is based on so this is frankly a good opportunity for us to uh, move ahead on that get some concrete plans go out for referendum and let's hope that we would be successful um, see what we're going to do I would <clears throat> entertain a motion to um, to to recommend to the town council that we set up a building committee um, with the complexion that the superintendent has alluded to. Um, would entertain a motion? Rosemary? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move that we establish a um, school um, building committee comprised of nine members, two members of the school board, two members of the town council, and five members of the general public. Do I see a second? Uh, uh, Jan? <coughs> is there any discussion? Loretta? Is it your feeling that we would appoint these five members through the school board or through the town council? Well, that's a good point. Um, is anybody? I guess okay. my reaction would be that uh, the town council would appoint two. We would appoint two. These are the public members. And uh, then uh, the chairman of the school board and the chairman of the council will jointly appoint the fifth member who would be the chairman. That was to some degree the discussion we had at that meeting with the, um, the town council was that it would be a joint effort that we would each share good. in appointments and that the two chairs would uh, appoint the chairman. Good. Are you on Those discussion? Members? I just did want to, I would like to confirm that the superintendent is ex officio member of that uh, committee. A non-voting member. Yes. How about the town manager? Uh, typically they do not. Uh, typically if it's a school building superintendent, uh, <laughs> we, we get lots of opportunity to serve on that. Um, business managers get involved too obviously from us you know especially when you get into con to uh, construction but at this point it it uh, I, I am not aware of town managers doing um, what I would suggest is that we go before the or the superintendent sends a letter to the town council before their next meeting with this recommendation and our vote and they will put it on their agenda and we'll either confirm or I think it would be a good idea if we had some kind of job description that went along with this so that people who, who may be interested in this are aware of, of what it entails. Um, if we can get some kind of a idea of the time. I know it's going to be an awful lot of time um, that will be required, but just so people have an idea of what, what they're getting into. 
And just the school space study committee, uh, they met at least once a month and sometimes twice a month, and that took, it, that was a, uh, almost a 15 month um, committee, and this would entail even longer than that, so. A great time commitment. Well, not to scare people <laughs> off, uh, that time commitment sometimes comes in chunks. You know, there'll be a period of time when it isn't too bad. <laughs> but I think as, and sure. as people have served on committees in this community, they, they put in the extra effort mm -hmm. and, and the reports that have come out of those committees have been excellent. So. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Oh, I did have, right. what, what would be the role of the middle school principal in all of this? The typical way in which these building committees work is that the architect as well as uh, in many cases uh, the committee seek input from the staff, administration staff, parents, and, and to in some in very interesting ways occasionally even the students. Um, that is particularly noticeable during the architectural drawing up of the concept design, um, but the building will be seen, and rightfully so, as a public building of the town of Cape Elizabeth. And the usual thought is that the people who have a voting right to make certain decisions, including what color you want it and so on, um, should be a mixed group of school and non-school people. I'm not sure I always think that's a, you know, a, a ideal, but at the same time I also think it works because the building will be a town property. And the uh, process that is now used by all good architects, including certainly all the ones that we would be lucky uh, to be working with, is to get good input from staff. You definitely need to know uh, from the staff what our educational, uh, I mean, implications for building the actual shape of the building or facilities, et cetera. Uh, and they, I've seen it work sometimes where the building committee is trying to make some decisions and staff is invited, the principal, um, usually staff will have representatives, for instance, at a middle school, it would be common, I suppose, to have somebody from all the teams. And that group becomes a kind of uh, advisory group to the building committee. Uh, that seems to work pretty well. They come and speak up uh, during discussions about, you know, get into all kinds of things, including doorknobs. Mm -hmm. um, whether there should be sinks in the room and so on, you know. Endless details. Uh, just to remind the public that this, this is an evolution, evoluting process which started with our acceptance of the School Space Study Committee last November and there were discussions through up until the budget and this was the process the board voted to go forward with and it's just another part of the process is setting up the building committee. So even though we don't seem to have had a lot of discussion tonight, it's an ongoing process that started almost a year ago. Anyone else? All those in favor? Six zero, uh, seven zero. Um, school board policies, uh, a second reading. The, at the last board meeting, I was asked to take the policy um, JG and look again at the what had been original language. My advice to you is that the first uh, two sentences be eliminated. I felt that they may have um, a very important message, but that I did not, frankly, think they fit particularly into this um, uh, policy, but I thought that the the last sentence in that introduction should be added to the ABC as a D. Um, hopefully you will meet, you will agree with me. I didn't make any change except to the um, policy JGA except for the one that had been indicated uh, during our meeting, which is the addition of number four at the bottom of the page. Okay, for the public's awareness, uh, under policy student discipline JG, the superintendent has recommended um, under um, 
suggested new language that discipline me measures should be reasonable and consistently applied and communicated to the students. This was to replace the introductory. Anne. Um, I, I would just like to add, and I, th and I think I mentioned this last time, I, I still think we should also add to this policy something about parents being notified. Mm -hmm. Could we just add a sentence to, the, to that new D section saying something like, parents shall be notified promptly of any discipline measures taken, something like that, just so we don't, what do you want? Uh, JG, the student discipline. So it was added to the other one, but not to this one. Um, um, yeah, uh, I guess one of the, just raise the issue, um, at what level should parents be notified? I mean. There are, in the course of a day, uh, for a classroom teacher or for a middle school teacher, there might be um, numerous small incidents that would, could technically be, uh, I'm sure in the minds of many teachers, would be seen as discipline, that is uh, asking somebody to stay in from a recess. That might be a fairly unusual, I don't know how unusual that is. Uh, maybe. Uh, what I would, would think is that if we could make that statement by, in some summary form, I mean, because I don't want us to get bogged down in the slip that goes home as a negative message every time somebody has to deal with, with an issue. Maybe one of the principals here has a more practical. Well, what, what, I'm, I'm thinking about specific things um, that have come up that I'm not sure that this is the place to mm, really be sure. discussing them, but you know, maybe at the detention level. Or, mm -hmm. You know, sometimes when a when the kid is actually restrained after school or mm -hmm. something, I, I don't know. You know, and may, and maybe it's not really that big an issue, but from a policy board policy level issue, it might be wise to um, indicate here uh, as a general guideline that uh, that uh, discipline or the need for discipline should be uh, a matter of open communication back and forth between school and home. In other words, I think the expectation from the policy level would be that we don't keep these surprises for parents for the end of the school with a nasty note or something or a notation on the card. Um, and hopefully we don't do things like that, but that I know that the early warning radar is a real important issue, but the reason why the, the, the notation is so explicit in the other issue is because of the level of the problem. Um, and that's a policy expectation there that that particular elevates it. In this case, I think what we're talking about is that good practice would include uh, communicating with parents, seeking parents' help um, to solve a problem. Doesn't I think that goes C, on. Sorry. I was just going to say, doesn't letter C address that? We could. <coughs> I'm just thinking of the possibility of an incident coming up where um, there eventually a problem arises because of a disciplinary measure and it becomes a kind of a retroactive problem. Maybe you could say something like prompt conferences or something to it. Yeah. Well, I think first we'd have to discuss whether or not there is insufficient communication I, I question whether there is insufficient communication. Uh, just judging from, you know, the pieces of paper I've seen and the incidents I've heard about, uh, there is uh, th that uh, the subject of discipline is dealt with on the report card, in the conferences. Uh, if a child is detained, I think those are noted on the, the report card. In any event, parents, uh, unless they, they both happen to be away from the home on the day that it occurs, they'll notice that the child is not on the bus, or they'll get a call. Um, so I guess before we started putting another layer on, I would like to examine whether or not there's a feeling that there's insufficient communication right now between uh, teachers and parents on the subject of discipline. Roseman. Um, with Sorry. all due respect to my fellow board mem member, Mr. Leslie, a lot of parents are not at home and do work. Uh, my biggest concern about the detention issue, uh, and this is more middle school, I haven't seen anything about detention at the high school. I'm not bragging, I'm just saying I don't know anything yet. <laughs> um, but uh, is the fact that students miss buses 
and they do not always call home, or if they were to call home, there would be no one there to receive the phone call. And many parents, um, I know one large employer uh, in Portland, you cannot get a, a phone call into the building at uh, between 3 and 3.15 because parents are calling to make sure that their uh, children have arrived home safely. And I just think maybe what we need is just a directive for an administrative guideline on this and not a policy decision. And also I would request that the communication be that the students be allowed to call their parent to say they are uh, in detention because I do think it happens quite often and I do think that the rooms are very full after school and I have uh, on occasion wondered where my son was and found him in Mr. Jewett's office, I mean, classroom, so. Would you agree with uh, uh, that we, uh, and I think you probably would, judging from what you said, that before trying to write something in the text tonight, we ought to examine the subject and discuss it a little bit more. I think try to draft something at this time. I think it's administrative. I don't think it's policy. Yeah, I agree with that. I would agree. I think it's an administrative guideline, and I think we are sending that message to the administrator that it should be in their handbook or whatever. <laughs> um, actually, it is in the handbook, and um, students are encouraged to call home. For any of you who deal on a regular basis with early adolescents, um, I really would like your guidance on this because if we need to call for everything, we will need some more phone lines. And um, we also deal with students sometimes who say, well, no, that's okay, my, my mom or my dad, that it's okay if I come home on the elementary bus, that's okay with them. And we usually wait and get a communication back and check with them, are you sure? I've had students who've been with me who have called parents and left messages on answering machines. Um, so we do try to encourage the students that if they are staying for a detention, for a discipline matter, or even staying after school for extra help, that they be sure they call their parents and let them know where they are. We're not perfect at that, but that's what our goal is, and it is in our handbook right now as a, as a statement to do that. D does encourage mean dictate, or, or it, are you giving, leaving the final decision up to the, the student? Encourage means, well, dictate, it's a word I use cautiously with middle school students, but we encourage them as strongly as we can to do that. Do we stand by the phone and watch them make the phone calls? No, but the phones that they use are either in the team room or in the main office, so people are there. Um, upon occasion, and this may be after family conferences and people have established this, that it really is quite all right. You don't have to call. or perhaps an arrangement has been made that every Tuesday and Thursday a child will stay for extra help. We do have a lot of students in our school after school hours or after classes have closed, but not all of them are there for disciplinary reasons. Many of them are there for extra help or they want to work on a project with friends and this is a time that they can get together and use the library and use the facilities to do that. And you have athletics. For we do have the athletics, days. right? And when some of our practices start at 3.30, kids will stay in classrooms and study and do homework, um, go to the Parents Association snack bar first, and then come and do homework and things um, prior to their practice. I would only make one aware awareness, and that's you are going to have the fifth grade again back under your that, umbrella. And right. They are, they are older elementary kids, but they are still young people. Oh, ab absolutely. And the fifth grade teachers are, are very good about monitoring more carefully the phone calls that they make home. It's, you treat a fifth grader a little bit differently and their kind, the kind of encouragement you make to them to call home is a bit different than when you're talking with an eighth grader. I would also say that upon occasion in discipline that I've dealt with with students, we have come to an agreement that they would like to first go home and talk with their parents about it. And then there's a communication that comes back to me. Um, that indeed that conversation has taken place. And part of that is in recognition that they are growing up, they are still going to make mistakes, but that they are willing to take responsibility for those. So we don't always handle it with a phone call, but we do try to have some kind of communication over especially major, any major issues that would occur. Jan, do you have a yeah, I was just wondering, are, are kids always allowed to use the lines in the offices and things? Or if, if they're staying after school for a detention, or um, if they are staying for extra help that they have just arranged for that day, yes. 
But for any other reason, they should have money with them if they're going to stay because they need to use a pay phone then? Is that, what, is that the rule? That, that's the general guideline. That is correct. Okay. May I just ask, who, who gets the money in the phone machine? The phone company. Oh, good. We Is didn't it a know big that. percentage? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. That's off the issue. I was just, thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? I would entertain a motion to uh, accept these policies. Mark? I move that we accept uh, policies file JG on student discipline and file JGA on corporal punishment and use of force as listed and amended. A second? Peter? Any further discussion? All those in favor? 7-0. We now move on to discussion of opening of schools. Main piece I, I wanted to put, we'd already talked a little bit about getting ready for school, but I wanted to be sure to call your attention to uh, two items which you just received uh, on school transportation. I've mentioned several times that part of the custodial maintenance transportation reorganization that we've been doing ever since we talked about it in budget uh, would impact our school bus schedule. What you have in front of you is the first time, as I understand it, we've ever had this uh, formal or formalized a schedule which actually lists uh, specific stops, for instance, um, I'm looking at the AM Kindergarten, which is talking about bus number one, stopping at Cantor Lane at 1112, 532 Mitchell Road at 1114, 490 Mitchell Road at 1115, 11 Belfield Road at 1117. This is an enormously organized list, and again, um, Sue Weatherby is responsible for that. She spent a lot of time with Charlie, she, uh, our bus transportation foreman, who, who obviously knows a great deal more about the nuts and bolts of this than she did, but she also spent some time understanding it to the point where we could reduce it to this kind of a schedule. Um, this will be published in the Courier, uh, the next, the article, it's, uh, the, the Courier that's coming out um, on the 5th, and uh, I, put a little notice in the last career urging people to be aware of that to look for uh, specific information for their times. We also of course have a number of copies of this. Uh, we'll make as many as need be available at the school offices. Uh, if somebody calls us in time we'll mail it to them I and mean, we'll make this available to you in any way that we can. I also would like to take the opportunity to read a short piece of information that we're sending along with the uh, bus routes to the courier, um, they may edit it for space and so on, but essentially what it says I think is important to share. One of our goals last spring was to implement by fall a more effective and efficient transportation system. We are a town of 12 square, square miles and yet at the elementary level we had 14 runs or two trips for each and every driver. The double runs meant that some children were arriving at school more than 30 minutes prior to the school starting time and on the other end of the day, children were still at school 30 minutes after the school day. In good weather and during daylight savings time, other than supervision, early arrival and late departure pose few problems. In inclement weather, however, children are packed into hallways or into the Pond Cove cafeteria for more than 30 minutes, not a safe or ideal situation for staff or children. Hence, every bus route and stop has been carefully considered, keeping the children's well-being and safety in mind. In an effort to keep buses running on time, stops have been consolidated. With this new schedule, all children will arrive no sooner than 15 minutes before the start of school and depart within 10 minutes of the ending of school. Because numbers are difficult to predict, we anticipate that some changes and adjustments may be necessary. If any of these affect your child or children, we will keep you informed. Schedules will be printed in the September 5th issue of the Cape Courier or are available in the school offices. Um, again, thank you for your anticipated support and cooperation. One of the issues we've had quite a lot of discussion about is are any of these changes going to impact what people are used to seeing for the frequency of bus stops? Because in some areas we seem to be stopping fairly close to every house. Other areas kids were congregating walking some distances. 
Um, I understand that there are really very minor changes here. There may be, for instance, on a street with um, three or four houses, only one stop and, and the youngsters being asked to walk in either, you know, kind of stopping in the middle. Um, again, for most uh, kindergarten stops, especially when the kindergarten is the only one on the bus, we pretty much stop for them every place. Uh, we think that is a very, very reasonable um, shifting of some of that in order to get our times tight enough to make this all work. Uh, I know from long experience that the first week of school, we will be very lucky if these times are even approximate. So please bear with us. It takes a couple of weeks for us to get that uh, work through. Um, but I know that an enormous amount of work has gone into it. And I think that uh, once we get rolling with it, it will work. Any glitches we have here, we will adjust. Um, we also want to let people know that if they have a problem with this, we are willing to review the situation. But we also ask for everybody's cooperation to understand that in order for us to avoid and eliminate the sort of holding tank operations that we've had to have, um, uh, I think it's in everybody's best interest that we make this work. I think you'll also note that under the middle school bus stops and elementary school bus stops that there is only one second run. There are two, uh, actually there's one at the elementary too, I think, which no, I is a, yeah. a 10 minute run. Uh, and I, I think the middle school one is only slightly longer than that. And it's actually the first, the closest bus mm -hmm. back that goes out. So we anticipate it pretty much coming back as the last youngsters who have been waiting and getting on the bus will virtually seem like one lift. Yeah. Um, Where do you, I don't see the second run on the middle school. Oh, 10A, okay. Well, that's the only time. What, what, what are the lines for uh, whether it's AM or PM kindergarten? I thought it was basically by where you lived in town. Mm -hmm. Is that right? I mean, one side of town or the other? I don't know is where that, that line is, as a matter of fact. But it just, it, it, maybe, I'm, maybe I'm wrong and it just, it just appeared that way, but it looks like they're, you know, I know in our neighborhood the, all the kids are starting in the afternoon, yet the bus stops at the kindergarten wing before it goes to Pond Cove. Um, maybe, it isn't, maybe it isn't that as clean as I thought, the line. She's talking it, about whether we assign kindergartners by where they live for AM and PM, or do we assign them by some other method? Frankly, I don't, I haven't learned that one yet. I have to be honest, I don't know the geography of Cape Elizabeth that well, but I do know that the neighborhoods in some cases are split. They're, they're split. And there are some okay. exceptions to the AM, um, PM assignments according to the neighborhoods, but they're very few. Okay. That's so in fact, some of these buses may not actually stop at the kindergarten wing if there aren't kids in the, for that morning, that say be, in the morning run, it may assumption. not actually stop there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, what is the reverse order? Uh, do we have a chart for that, the times they come home? Um, no. I mean, I think the, what you do is figure out how long, how far you are, and we have the end of school. Okay. So it's just, uh, if, it's, if you're living, uh, I mean, if you look at this and realize, so what you're saying is that the information, people want to know how long the child's going to be on the bus. Well, I'm thinking of what you're going to publish in the Cape Courier, actually. And there might be people that say, well, what time does the bus leave the school, and what time could I expect it back? Okay, I, okay. Corner. This doesn't tell you when they actually leave. Okay, I see what your point is. Okay. And is the same schedule used, first on is first off? It is. I know that the um, first time. Okay. Yeah, it must be while well, you're reversing it. First on, first off. Okay. I mean, if you're picked up first, you're, you're delivered. Off. Okay. First. So what you're suggesting for the information that goes to the courier, the time of leaving at end of school. I think those times. Um, those times are available and have been put on other information, whether it's probably a good idea, however, to put it here, too, for those people. Obviously, some parents are very concerned about when, when they'll get home. Or they want to walk out to the corner. Sure. So we want approximate. 
I would imagine that this would give you that information. It's just a matter of pointing out how to use it. I think you're right. And, and I think that Sue could pull this off her computer mm -hmm. very easily. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I wish to really compliment her for her knowledge of systems and, uh, and computers because this is the first since I've had children in the CAPE system and that's been 10 years. Rosemary. Uh, yes, for the people that are in the public who have asked about the high school buses, this schedule does reduce from six to four the number of high school bus runs. And uh, no student is picked up before 10 minutes of seven, uh, and all buses are there at around 7.15. So there will be no students delivered at the high school before seven o'clock in the morning anymore. Any other comments? observations thank you I also would note for the uh, well, we're on buses uh, we send out a packet uh, from the central office which essentially uh, is information about cafeteria uh, there's some information and application for uh, reduced uh, free um, uh, meals there is uh, some information from the special education department, particularly informing parents of their rights. Those are regulations that by federal law we are required to distribute to all people in the district and rather than just hand them to children and not know whether they get home or not, um, we do take the responsibility of uh, distributing those. If people see um, receiving those have any questions, please feel free to call my office and we will try to answer them for you. I think they're quite self-explanatory. I did note that there were some rules there on bus behavior. Uh, it is an issue we've talked about administratively, and I do want to remind parents that riding the bus is a privilege and not a right, and that it is absolutely imperative that children behave themselves on the bus. We are perhaps in one of the uh, results of consolidating some of these routes will probably mean that there will be more children on some of the buses than has been the case in the past. It is absolutely imperative that children sit still, be quiet, do not horse around. It is a safety hazard. So we definitely appreciate it. If you will have a little conversation with your children, uh, I'm sure you'll be hearing reminders from the teachers and uh, from the administration. Uh, we are asking bus drivers to fill out those slips promptly and at early early in the discipline process we just passed a policy on discipline and doesn't explicitly mention bus behavior there but we have separate policies for that administrative policies um, and we are asking them to um, definitely uh, fill out those slips get them to the principals make sure that parents are contacted so that we do know what's going on there and that we can in fact um, work to improve the situation but uh, of all the uh, issues we need we need parent cooperation and parent conversation with your children it's in their best interest to behave may i recognize uh, sue weatherby Hi. um i want to clarify that question in regard to how the buses travel um on the way home from school they travel exactly the same routes they travel in the morning okay with the exception of the elementary run that has a second run. That 10 minute run to the Jewett Road neighborhood will be done first. That's done last in the morning. Other than that, the buses will travel the exact same routes as they do for the, for the morning runs. Okay. Um, just for clarification, they will depart the high school um, a couple minutes after two. Um, they will depart the middle school probably 222 or so and we'll depart from the elementary school between 10 minutes of three and five minutes of three so if they take the the time frame in the morning they can pretty much judge when their child will be home okay is what that time, clear what time does the elementary school day end the elementary school day ends at 10 minutes of three starts at 820 and ends at 250 is, is that clear and we can put um, just a clarification um, in the newspaper that the, the buses will travel the same routes going home and what time they will be departing each school both in the a.m. and the p.m. and then parents should be able to judge from that 
I, I think it is important to remind people that the school um, starting and ending times are different because I don't think a lot of people have really picked up on that. Did that go out uh, one way or another? Any letters that went home to the only school day that has changed? Oh, it's just is, is, it just is the home elementary home? school. I think it would be a good idea just to note it because I'm not sure. I, I know I've talked to people who who did not pick up on that, and I know it was in a communication somewhere, but people may have missed it. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, so I will make sure that the superintendent has the departure time from each of the schools in the AM and the departure time um, in the PM as well, so that parents can judge that time frame. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. So could you highlight, since it's, it's a reverse of what it was in previous years, um, in that press release to parents? Because I, I'm sure that the assumption will be that it was, although the times are different mm -hmm. and the stops are different, that the, the reverse cycle would be the same. Has it not been in the past? No. I don't even know that. Did they, did they do the bus routes in reverse yes. when they did the afternoon yeah, run before? It, it was first in, first out on the way home. Mm -hmm. uh, the reward for being picked up early was you got home first in the afternoon. Um, so it, it, since that has changed, that really should be highlighted. It hasn't changed. If, if you're picked up at Cantor Lane first, when you go home at night, you're dropped off. The first. Cantor Lane person gets off first. first I'm sorry. On, first off. If anybody wants to know where I have difficulty or the most difficulty, <laughs> it's understanding that. Thank you very much. So that is the same. No, I would think no it would reason have to, to be. highlight. The only other way it would be we, would be to somehow. Go Keep everybody on the bus and go to the back. I mean, that wouldn't make okay. sense. So the Jewett Road is the only exception to the to a switch in early. That's the only second run at this point, and that's a very short run. So yes, when we that will be the first bus out um, from the elementary school, and it takes them no more than 10 minutes to accomplish that route. So they'll just fall in on the end of the line, and those children will still be out of there um, by certainly between three and five past. Since you're here, I'll personally thank you for your efforts. Yeah. The cable must have been fixed. Who's <laughs> <laughs> trying to keep it from having the <laughs> Any other questions? Also on those, just for your clarification, are, are some of the special runs. And those, that is when we either utilize the handicapped bus or um, the smaller buses to get into such neighborhoods as Hannaford Cove. Um, those are the buses that say 10A. Um, those will all be also be the buses that go to um, Spurling School, Woodford School, and so forth. So those routes are included um, on that bus run that you have. I just have one comment. It has nothing to do with the bus runs, but how successful was our lease of a van this summer? Mm -hmm very successful um, it was well utilized um, the fact that it was brand new was a great plus for us because we also had to rent one that went through two transmissions um, it necessitated us the, the rented van necessitated us sending a bus to pick up um, 25 stranded um, canoers in the northern part of the state so it was just a welcome relief to have our own well-maintained brand new vehicle um, because there are just no guarantees when you start to rent um, vans. And I think that um, it's already been scheduled for fall athletic trips. And, um, you know, I think it's going to just give us that kind of flexibility that we need when we can utilize a smaller vehicle and have it driven by anyone who has a valid driver's license. Thank you. So I think the benefits are just beginning. Anything 
anything else on discussion of opening of schools? Not for me. Okay. Anyone else have any concerns about the opening of schools? If not, we will now move on to new business and personnel requests. As I noted in the agenda notes, we are getting right down to the wire, and I'm pleased to bring you the list that I have here. Um, I have some explanations of these um, situations, so I'll go down through with a little bit of explanation, and then if you have any questions, and uh, we can go ahead with appointments. Uh, for people outside the system for first-time appointments, um, a special education at Pond Cove, Marilyn Dale, and again, you have a, a VITA sheet with some summary of these teachers so you can see their background. Special education at the middle school, Donna Durham. Uh, our part-time gifted and talented uh, uh, teacher, Jill Strauss. And uh, a grade seven position, Beverly Bisbee. I might also go on and explain the grade seven, which was not one we've already filled, one grade seven you will recall. So this one became available because uh, with Mary Bruns' retirement, we had a half-time remedial reading position open, and Margaret Welch, who has been a seventh grade language arts teacher, requested to be transferred to that position. We were also asking her to pick up one gifted and talented class at the sixth grade level. Um, we also had a resignation last uh, at our last board meeting from Sandy Weist, who was a fourth grade teacher. Uh, Barbara Powers, who has been teaching in a job share position at the fifth grade level asked to um, be appointed to that fourth grade or transferred I should say to that fourth grade position opening up a fifth grade job share position and Kelly Manhan you may recall had asked for a job share position earlier uh, in the season that wasn't one excuse me available so she was contacted and um, since she'd already requested that transfer and is um, asking to be transferred to that so we have four appointments of new staff. Uh, your vote can uh, include an approval of the transfer of uh, people already on staff to the positions as noted. I make one note. Um, do we need to first approve the additional gifted and talented time since it's not a budget, it was not approved by the budget? Yes. Before uh, we go in? Right. That would be appropriate. You could do it as part of this vote. In other okay. words, understanding that it is an additional piece due to the scheduling as we had it. We had to add that on. There was no other way we could manage it. Um, I would see it as appropriate for you if you vote to approve these appointments. I mean, if, you, if there's anybody that has a problem with that and does not wish to approve that extension of time, that would have to be a separate vote. But if it is general approval, then it could be one vote. Can you explain that issue for the public? Well, there are two parts to it, really. Uh, number one, while we were working to, to establish the best gifted and talented part-time position we could, we realized that we um, uh, probably needed to look at the math strand, uh, or at least it was our recommendation to look at the math strand by reassigning people uh, on staff, from, uh, for instance, um, Michael Efron is going to be teaching uh, some of that at the uh, Pine Cove, as well as middle school and high school. Uh, but that still left us with a part-time position, which at one time looked like four-fifths, another time looked like half-time, and then at the possibility of a six-tenths. Uh, in the meantime, we had to schedule, Nancy had to schedule middle school um, classes. And we'd already, of course, identified fifth grade and sixth grade, we knew approximately uh, that there would be a class and so that was already scheduled then when we started interviewing people we found we had uh, some problems with people who were applying for part-time positions some were available at some times and not others and our recommendation to fill that position is somebody who simply could not pick up that sixth grade uh, position at that schedule however I also uh, realized when um, I looked at her background had some discussions whether she brings a very impressive background and um, I think we need to have some help in design for the entire middle school gifted and talented program and I saw the opportunity um, by asking Margaret Welch who was more than qualified to pick up the sixth grade gifted and talented class and she was available for that scheduling uh, to use Jill's talents for a combination of teaching and some working with other teachers to um, um, really further our design on how we're going to uh, 
to really, we've had a lot of discussion about gifted and talented. How do we want to handle that program? So budgetary wise, I know that the finance subcommittee was uh, discussed this uh, in subcommittee. Um, it essentially is not going to put us over our projected budget for, for teachers. If you look at benefits and all those things, so we're essentially going to come in at a wash. Okay, I entertain a motion, Rosemary. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if you feel more comfortable, I'll be happy to make a motion that we uh, accept an increase in time uh, from point four to point six. If, if you would like to see that before the motion to accept the nomination. I would because it's an increase in FTEs and I would like to make sure that that issue has been resolved before we. Mr. Chairman, I move that we, uh, excuse me, if one moment. Mr. Chairman, I move that we allow the increase from 0.4 to 0.6 FTE for gifted and talented program for the um, four five, is it four five six or four five? Four five six. It's four five six. It's an eight six. Yeah. Excuse. Okay. For the four five position. Do I hear a second? Or is there under, is there clarity of what the motion is? I'll I'll do it right this time, <laughs> Mr. Chairman. <laughs> I move that we allow the increase from point four to point six FTE for the four five gifted and talented position. Okay. That's right. Do I hear a second? Mark, is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, 7-0. Now we may proceed on with the superintendent's nomination. She has read them. I entertain a motion. I move the superintendent's nominations be approved as read. I second. Rosemary, any further discussion? All those in favor? 7-0. Thank you. We now move on to nominations for coaches and co-curricular positions for the 1992-93 school year. Hmm. I lost my list. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Um, we have uh, actually two lists. We can handle them as one. Uh, they're all year to year appointments. The additional coaching assignments for 92 93 fall season high school golf, Rick Kelly and Scott Mayer, seventh grade boys soccer, Ben Raymond. Um, then you also have a co curricular list high school department chairs, industrial technology, Gary Lenoy, English, Betsy Wiley, guidance, Sharon Merrill, fine arts, uh, Richard Mullen, foreign language. Judith Liberty, Social Studies, Margaret Beals, Math, Sam Boothby, Science, Paul Jackson, Health, Physical Education, Andrea Kerr, Library, Joyce Bell, although actually I think as a matter of fact we had, uh, we've had some discussion at the co-curricular um, committee level of a, an adjustment for that as extra time during the summer. Are you indicating that that I should? I am questioning that position. Right. Yeah, I am too because I think that. Uh, okay, I know I, I understand what's happened here. That the um, we had a meeting of that co-curricular uh, contract committee that reviews those, and the meeting, um, the last meeting we had, we agreed. First of all, there was some uh, hope. There was some hope there would be some settlement on the negotiations, but we agreed that we needed another meeting. Uh, school ran out before we had that other meeting and there were two or three issues that were uh, partially resolved but not completely resolved. One of them was the, not the intent to um, necessarily um, diminish uh, Joyce Bell's position but to change the money from a department chair which doesn't make sense when you have a singleton librarian but to um, do what is much more commonly done, which is to reimburse librarians for work in the summer. But I can see that it hasn't been handled on this list that way. Therefore, I would suggest it's perfectly appropriate to accept that from the, the list, tabling that for the next meeting where we will straighten that out. Um, I would like to move to table that position until the next school board meeting. Okay. 
uh, grade five team leader, Deborah Cross. Um, the co Chiwanki leaders, I believe that's a new position. We reallocated some funds, so it's no new money, but it's a new position. Right, and that was another one that we had discussed, but I think that one had reached the decision level, if okay. my recollection was it that It was one. a new one that I had not seen. Mm -hmm. The superintendent's reading from my highlighted list. That's why she's <laughs> stopping mid sentence. Well, it's almost, it saves a little time to answer the questions I'm going along. Uh, Joe Doan, Claire Ramsbotham, Joyce Bell, um, three for one fee, I assume. No, no, it's no, no, it's two. Oh, I'm sorry. I beg your pardon. Beg your pardon. Wrong school. Two of them Joe Doan and Claire Ramsbottom. And book talk at the high school, Joyce Bell. Co curricular music, 912, Gil Donatelli. Cultural Exchange Club, Bill Brewington. Music director for semi-annual musical, Gil Donatelli, Excuse outing club, I'm sorry? I was just going to say, shouldn't that be biannual instead of semi-annual? Yes. 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 Semi-annual would be great, but <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they want to do that. be exhausted. <laughs> outing club, Pat Monterio, visual arts workshop, change from Celeste Roberge to Laura Giberts, and high school yearbook change from Mandy Garmy to Betsy Nielsen. Those were two that were um, submitted earlier, voted on, and what this is, is simply indicating to you that the people who originally agreed to do it have had some changes in their schedule asking uh, for reassignment. I, I think one of the things that I just want to make a comment on this co-curricular assignment in the interest of trying to set up systems, it's been peculiarly difficult to get this one in hand. The athletic uh, assignments have been for years, I guess, on the on a schedule where they do come in um, pretty much on season. The co-curricular I discovered were not coming in on year-to-year -year appointments. They were not going to the board. Any co-curricular or athletic fee should come to the board on a year-to-year -year appointment basis. What we've had some difficulty straightening out is that that's not a practice that either our office has been used to, so that the bookkeeping on that, sending out of the separate contracts on that, I have found to be somewhat unpredictable, and so we are working to make that a better timeline. But we are also struggling against a, a piece of contract language that makes this hard for us, too, because uh, if we, when we finish settling our contract, I hope it's a piece that we can, um, can take care of. We are supposed to give notification to people as early as March on both athletic fee and co-curricular fee if, in fact, they're going to be recommended for continuing that position. And that can be a real difficulty in a variety of ways. So I, I, there are some ragged pieces in this, and I apologize for that. But at the same time, we wanted to um, bring to you those that were ready. So the list, with the exception of tabling for further clarification, how we will handle the library is accurate. Yeah. Um, uh, this Coach Wonky thing is a new thing. How, how is it decided that something becomes a co-curricular That was level? A, okay, that was, yeah. uh, there is a process in the contract language for the co-curricular. Um, as I said, the group has met, met a couple times, as a matter of fact. And it, uh, my understanding that it's, I think it's explicitly spelled out in the contract language, but if not, I understood it was past practice, that if there is money available that was in there originally for some other um, club, that seems to have gone by the wayside, that committee can make a recommendation to the board through this process that that money should be transferred now to a more appropriate club. That is not an uncommon process for but, clubs. But is this how we find out about it? It just shows up on the list and we don't know what it entails. I mean, for, for people who don't have kids mm -hmm. at that level, mm -hmm. um, I, for one, don't really know what, what does that entail and where, what, what went by the wayside in the meantime. Don't. I, I think she can use it. Yeah. This is actually a question I anticipated, so found the right paperwork. Um, the what went by the wayside is um, when the committee met. We worked with. Um, we'll wait for the airplane to go over. But <clears throat> our instructional music, five through eight, um, had been allotted 300 hours to do that. And um, the person in that position who also served on our committee uh, recommended that reducing that to 175 hours was a more accurate reflection of the time that was spent. We also had a science club that had been allocated 45 hours, 
but we had not had a functioning science club for two or three years. So that gave us some extra time. And in fact, our total time that we've requested for next year is under what we've been allotted. The Chewanke coordinators, last, at the last board meeting, we had a discussion about the eighth grade team leaders and that interesting design for next year. And Mark um, Foray brought up the point about making the jobs doable and are they attractive to people. In the sixth grade, Chewanke takes up a tremendous amount of the team leader's time. And in talking with that grade level team, one of the things that made the sixth grade team leader position unattractive was the number of hours one had to devote to Chewanke. So we talked about it as a grade level team, talked about it, then we talked about it as a team leadership uh, in the middle school with all of the team leaders, and then we brought it to the co-curricular committee to talk about. And actually what those people will be doing, there are gift wrap sales that they work with parent coordinators to coordinate. There are contacting numerous contacts throughout the year with the Chewanke staff and working with them. Um, coordinating different school staff about the preparations for Chewanke and also about who's going to be going to Chewanke, um, setting up the groups for Chewanke when they get there. That is all done beforehand, but the students find out when they get here get their organizing information to go home throughout the year about Chewanke, um, organizing a parent information night, um, doing the money collection um, and keeping track of the money that is collected from the gift wrap and also from our magazine sale, which helps defer the cost for Chewanke, health forms that need to be distributed and then collected and, and double-checked to make sure we have one from everybody who's going to be attending. Uh, answering different parent questions and contacts. And as more and more of our students go to Chewanke, sometimes that even means making phone calls once we get to Chewanke to make sure that everything is set, that any medical needs are indeed going to be taken care of when they're there. Um, coordinating with the guidance office for equipment scholarships as well as financial scholarships for students attending Chewanke. And also, once you're at Chewanke, um, the co coordinators will be acting as the administrator um, from the middle school and any events that come up that need administrative attention the Chewanke staff will be coordinating those will be contacting those people and then if necessary they will be contacting me so those are some of the things that the Chewanke coordinators are going to be doing don't we have a board representative to the co curriculum yeah it was Rosemary. Yeah. So, Rosemary I was at that meeting I did. And, and so, was I supposed I to be answering a good question? No, I didn't want to put you on the spot, but I, I just wanted to. Oh, I support that. Kind well, of answer I, I, Anne's I, question, you know, about you know seeing some a new position at the last, you know, when it's coming before the board for approval. Well, I, I know I, I've, I've raised in the past that I thought that some of these, and in fact, a lot of the thing, I realize that that it is a lot of work, and and um, I know it's well well attended and certainly well thought of by the kids and their parents but mm -hmm. it, it does sound like a lot of those things could be done by parents and I've, I've said this before about some of these other co-curricular things and I was wondering if we've the, the parents help us out tremendously with Chewanke uh, they really do a lot of the gift wrap organization organ, organizing and working with the gift wrap people but this is just a school person for them to be in contact with to double check on things like do we have a place where we can deliver the paper to how can we get the paper to the students so they can deliver it to all the people who have purchased it and some of those kinds of things. Um, the parents do help us greatly with this effort um, and they attend very very well the parent information nights and they have very appropriate questions. It just takes time to deal with all of those things um, in doing that but we really have tremendous parent support for that. I, I'm really not trying to victimize this, this thing at all. I just would like to make the point that I still think we need to have an overall look at the number of hours that are in the co-curricular, whether they're appropriate, whether they're even appropriate as a paid staff position, or whether some of those things could be picked up by volunteers in the community. That, that well, has nothing to do with this in particular. Just yeah, I think we have comment. been looking at that uh, part of the negotiations uh, and, uh, and in other areas. We do have the right at the final moment under the contract not to fill one of these positions. I mean, we could, under, for whatever uh, 
uh, wisdom or lack thereof, we could vote not to fill some of these. And that's the final check in the system of checks and balances. In defense, it, oh, I, I was just wondering, uh, since we're discussing particular situations here, may I ask the high school principal a question? Uh, it's regarding the co-curricular music 912 and music director for the biannual musical. Did those just stand out in a reduction, Frank, as opposed to well, a... The, the list that is before you is an update um, of the list that you received last spring and improved. You improved a number of co-curricular positions last spring. So what you see there is not a complete list of all the co-curricular positions. It's just the ones you didn't do. And the one, there has been a change um, as a result of the co-curricular fee committee's deliberations um, on the way we do uh, music uh, 912. And uh, Gil Donatelli uh, very thoughtfully and I think um, very candidly um, made some suggestions that will save us um, uh, well, well what, what it will do is permit us to redistribute if you will those co-curricular fees to other areas where people had not been fairly paid and he thought he had been more than fairly compensated if not um, one, one hesitates to say overcompensated, but that the hours were well, well uh, overdue for reexamination. So what you see for the vocal instrumental co-curricular is instead of, uh, uh, let's say, 300 hours on an annual basis, it's 100 hours on an annual basis, because he, he, and I think that's an accurate figure. What he did say was on the years that they do a musical, he puts in an enormous amount of time working to, to do the music for that high school performance. Uh, My Fair Lady is a good example. And so what we agreed to do was to, in a sense, create two co-curricular music positions, 912. One that's an annual one, and then one that is the biannual one of musical director, music director, for which he puts in a lot of extra hours. Uh, and yes. that leads to my final question. Why are, uh, is this on our list for approval when next year's year is the year there is not a um, I, 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 it does. You don't need to appoint a musical director for next year. You're correct. Um, and, I, and I think that uh, Connie has already spoken about the fact that there are some glitches in this list that are simply um, lists, that, lists that have come from me to, to Connie Brown or from D to me to Connie Brown in different ways. And it's just there's some duplication here. And that's one that you perhaps do not. Well, that is, we will not be paying Gil for that this coming year. There is no money in the, in the actual money line for that for this coming year. But he, in fact, will be the, the uh, uh, presuming he's here, he will be the musical director. Would you like to table it? Position, um, or? You can just take yes. it out, yes. I mean. uh, or eliminate it. There, there is no need for that position this year, no funding for that position. There's no seniority that goes with it. Seniority is not an issue. Right. That's, that's right. what I mean. That's I right. Mean, it doesn't need to be there for this no year. There's no benefit You're perfectly to the correct. person's name attached to that position to have it continue. It could be tabled. Or uh, I would, I would uh, treat it a little differently. Uh, I, I would just say not filled. Yeah. You know, leave it in there just so it doesn't get forgotten in next year's budget uh, and, in, and in the co-curricular uh, fee committee meetings and just, let's say, not filled. That, that's that. That's, that's fine. I think that's the, the the point you're making is that Gill doesn't need to be nominated for the right. position the coming year, but the position is there. Yeah. The will of the board to not fill it. Okay. Are there are there any questions or comments about the list? I just wanted to comment on the Chiwanki that. Uh, especially the, the input of parent involvement, the success of that paper drive has reduced the out-of-pocket uh, scholarship, uh, out-of-pocket expense to parents substantially. <coughs> I know from the three times that I've sent a child there, the first year was something like $85 and last year was something like $30. So it, it's been very successful. And Shawanki's fees have been going up, and yet what parents have had of course, you do contribute in buying papers, so. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a good paper. 
<laughs> it is good paper. Yeah. <laughs> Rosemary. Um, yes, I'd like to ask the superintendent, are there any other positions left unfilled? I'm sure there are. Uh, well, as I said at the outset of this, I am not satisfied yet that we have a handle on good systematic reporting on this co-curricular situation. Um, I do not mean to imply that we're paying people for things we're not doing. We're not, we're not in that situation. But I'm having uh, more difficulty than I like getting a good paper trail on this one. When, as I've said to you in a number of pieces, um, I really believe that a good deal of my time is taken up with trying to a, either improve the systems that we use to get things done or in some cases design them. And I'm sitting here thinking this one needs redesigned, but never mind. Anyway, um, it's partly for the reasons that I said, that there has been a very casual and informal way of treating it. At some time, I discovered last year that they weren't going to the board. I mean, they were simply being appointed and people, and you weren't aware of who was holding what position unless you happened to see them. Some were coming to you and not all the coming. They do come in at different times. Sometimes, as happens here, you have people who have said, yes, we will do it, and then their lives change and no, they won't. So we, and, and it does require good, tight organization in our office, uh, in the uh, business office, to keep track of this, and we are working on it. Thank you. Frank. There, there, is, there is one position at the high school, there's a freshman class advisor position that's open. Um, and that is occasioned by the resignation, uh, well, actually by the, by the fact that the, that the advisors move up with the classes, for example. And so I will be asking for faculty volunteers, and, and, and Connie has spoken to the to notion that some people over the summer decide, I don't have time to do that this year. So there are those kinds of, of changes. But there is that position that is the the one that I know is unfilled. Other than that, I think the others at the high school are filled. Um, and, and I think they're all paid not much, with the exception of Gil's second position, uh, which, is, which was not slated to be paid. So that other than that, what you see and what you've already acted on should be uh, what's there. Nancy. There are also some uh, approved stipends for the implementation of the Chicago series and uh, program at the elementary level that we will be bringing to you next month, uh, those positions and recommending that they're filled. We're still in the process of having uh, representatives from some of the grades uh, finalized and, and making decisions about who will fill those positions. I have some names, but rather than bring you a partial list, I didn't submit it at this time, but I will be coming to you and asking for approval for uh, representation in K, 1, 2, and 3, just so that you're aware of that. Any further comment? Two things. We, we have some of those in the middle school, too, that are part of the, the new package that's going in, and we haven't had a chance to meet and talk about those yet, so we may be coming to you with those. But um, the other ones have been filled. And I would just like to say, in working on the committee, that Tony Baffa and Gil Donatelli really did a fantastic job in, of looking at how many hours had been allocated to music directors in the past and really saying, that's too much. And um, then in talking with Rebecca Wing, who also works in the, the same department, that they realize that, no, part of this is part of my job, and this is the small part that's extra. But I think with all three of those people, we get outstanding quality of programming and instruction um, and just friendship and experience for our students. And they really came to that table very willingly to talk honestly about what was extra and what they really saw as part of their job. I entertain a motion. I so move. Do I say a second, Rosemary? I, I have a question. Okay. The, in your motion, did you request that we table the library? Yes, uh, I had. I move. Uh, we table the library and we put uh, not filled in the music director for the biennial music. Okay, I'll second that. Okay, second, for Rosemary. Any further discussion? I entertain. All those in favor? 7-0. Uh, Could I just have Connie read back the, uh, 
the motion that Peter made for teachers, hiring of the teachers. Should be approved as read. Superintendent's nominations for teachers be approved as read. Okay. I, I wanted to be sure it did not say new teachers because that also included the transfers. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. All right, fine. Nomination of and staff appointments. Okay. Thank you. Okay, but the final agenda item is the setting of the September meeting, school board meeting and workshop. It has come to the attention of the board that our next meeting would be on the first day of school. And as we have, we'll have met three times in a matter of six weeks. Um, it was felt that we would like to hear about the first day of school a week later. So it was, it's being recommended that we um, schedule our next school board meeting on September 15th at 7.30. If that's Mark. I will be out of town and unable to attend that meeting. Okay. Are there any other members who feel like will not be here? Just as long as we have a quorum. Okay, then, then I will set the next school board meeting for September 15th at 7.30. Um, also, we had essentially, uh, tentatively set up our workshops to be the um, third, fourth, fourth Tuesday. Um, we need to set up a school board workshop for September if you feel there is a need for one. And that would be, yeah, I'd like to see you. okay. Um, that would, the 22nd? Yes, we did. Yeah. Well, we your choice would be 29th. to do the it 29th. at the regularly scheduled 22nd or, or move it back to the 29th. And if you look ahead at the October uh, board meeting, I think that's going to give you a two week span of time. So it would be 29th. September 29th instead of our usual. If that means with Rosemary. Um, Mr. Chairman, I would just like to uh, ask you if we know whether or not we will be able to meet in chambers. And if not, uh, we won't be able to be live broadcast and for the public to know that in advance if possible. Okay. Those, those are usually... Uh, Planning board. Yeah, but I mean, they're usually, those meetings are announced formally anyway in the paper. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, on TV. But we'll, we'll check into that. Thank you. Okay. okay the, the, other, the other final thing is that we had in our packet a, um, an agenda for the opening day of school for staff, which is Thursday, September 3rd, 1992. And just to make the board aware that they are invited to attend. Um, I will not be able to be present for that opening. Okay. I'm sorry to miss your You're speech, miss <laughs> Send me a copy. I'm sure it'll be excellent. The, uh, the superintendent will be the keynote speaker. <laughs> We've already decided that. <laughs> I entertain a motion for the consideration of a request by the superintendent to enter executive session for the purposes of one discussing the status of teacher negotiations and the proposed administrative contracts and two a personnel issue I so move uh, seconded by Loretta all those in favor 7-0